Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Sunday, October 6th. Today we will continue to have breezy winds across the north, but certainly nothing as strong as what we had a couple of days ago. These wind gusts will generally be between about 20 and 25 miles per hour with relative humidity in the teens. These winds will taper off a bit Monday and pick up again on Tuesday, but still in that 20 to 25 mile per hour range. Otherwise, there are some weak disturbances approaching the Great Basin with very limited moisture. However, we could see a few buildups or even a lightning strike or two over the Sierra front today and tomorrow. And then on Monday and Tuesday, this threat expands a bit further east across parts of Nevada and Utah and even near the Yellow Lake Fire in northern Utah. However, again, coverage is expected to be very limited if we even get thunderstorms in some of these areas at all, and certainly not expecting any appreciable moisture. Otherwise, no showers and thunderstorms over the last 24 hours, and we had light initial attack yesterday across the Great Basin, but still continued growth on our large fires. Over the last 7 to 14 days, we've continued to see very dry conditions across the Great Basin, and this is reflected in our ERCs that are now above the 80th to 90th percentile across much of Utah, parts of southern and eastern Nevada, and even above the 97th percentile in parts of Wyoming. We are seeing those increases continue in Idaho and along the Sierra Front, and really across all areas of the Great Basin. Here's a couple of our ERC charts over in western Wyoming, where we obviously do have the Pack Trail Fire. We are seeing ERCs at record highs for the time of year and again above that 90th percentile. We have seen ERCs make this steady climb across the entire Great Basin. Along the Sierra Front where we could see a few lightning strikes today or tomorrow, ERCs are also very high near record highs for the time of year. Looking at the satellite image from this morning, you can see we have high pressure dominating the Four Corners area but this trough off the west coast so this is where weak impulses will approach the Great Basin, and you can see even some moisture and cloud cover off the California coast. So this is what will give us our any thunderstorms that we see over the next few days, and also some breezy winds up north. Otherwise, our smoke forecast for the next two days does not change much with a westerly or southwest wind that will push the smoke plumes off to the east. And then looking at later today, again, high pressure dominating. We do have some high risk for those gusty winds in central Idaho and in western Wyoming, especially due to our large fire activity. Even though these winds will be marginal with respect to wind speed, they will still be breezy with dry conditions and very critical uh, fuel conditions. Otherwise, we could see some, again, embedded moisture for maybe some buildups and possibly a lightning strike along the Sierra front. No high risk due to the limited nature of coverage of any of these storms. However, this will be something to watch because we have seen very dry conditions recently, and so any lightning would be something to at least monitor. Otherwise, relative humidity today will be in the teens across much of Nevada, Utah, and in the single digits down south. Up north near our large fires, the relative humidity generally in the mid-teens to around 20%. And you can see those gusty winds today, again, mostly in that 20 to 25 mile per hour range. Could see some gusts approach 30 miles per hour in the higher terrain. Otherwise, temperatures today will be well above normal, continuing across Nevada and Utah, and have been on the increase in the north after the most recent cold front. Otherwise, today are possible thunderstorms. You can see that very limited moisture along the Sierra front and into central California. Again, any lightning strikes will be very isolated, and we will see today if they even have enough energy to develop. Otherwise, as we move into Monday, we have a little bit of a stronger disturbance moving into the West Coast, so a little bit better chances for isolated showers or thunderstorms in parts of the Sierra Front or Nevada. Again, no high risk just due to the limited nature, but we'll continue to monitor this. Otherwise, relative humidity is really unchanged tomorrow from what we will see today, and the wind gusts, again, will taper off a bit over central Idaho and western Wyoming and generally be out of the west or northwest, but still somewhat breezy with gusts in the teens or around 20 miles per hour. Otherwise, temperatures continue to increase. We will be at least 10 degrees above normal across the Great Basin, if not more, in some locations. And you can see on Monday, a greater threat for some isolated storms. Again, even in these areas, lightning would be very isolated. So again, we'll be looking at that, but due to the very dry and warm nature of the lower levels, even showers that start to develop or buildups that don't have lightning could produce gusty outflow winds. So it will be something to monitor, even though we don't have any large fires at the current time where we are expecting this lightning on Monday. On Tuesday, this trough slides slightly eastward, pushing that moisture a little bit further east. 
Again, no high risk, but this would be the day we could see some buildups or lightning strikes or gusty outflow winds near the uh, Yellow Lake Fire in northern Utah. So looking at the relative humidity, and uh, not really much change here. Wind gusts start to pick up a bit on Tuesday in central Idaho, and you can see some of those gusty outflow winds showing up on the model now over eastern Nevada into western Utah. And then looking at our temperatures, still very warm temperatures, again, staying with those well above normal temperatures. And then the possibility of thunderstorms, you can see stretches from eastern Nevada across Utah. So we will be monitoring that. Other, otherwise, the three-day precipitation, again, very limited. And then as we move into middle of the week, we still have some trapped moisture here over the eastern side of the Great Basin. But winds will likely start picking up in the north, possibly by Wednesday, but especially into Thursday. We currently don't have any high risk, but this will be something we'll be watching across the Great Basin for any increase in winds. Otherwise, we could get some cloud cover moving into the north later in the week, but the stronger trough of low pressure starts to move into the Pacific Northwest late in the week, and then by Saturday tracks across the northern Great Basin. So we could see some moisture. We could see a decrease in fire potential, at least briefly in the north. Also could see some precipitation and cooler temperatures. But right now, uh, we're just keeping an eye on it as models have been somewhat inconsistent. Um, so we could see a lot more yellow on the map in the north going towards the weekend. But again, we will continue to monitor exactly where that moisture will track. And then the seven day total precipitation, again, you can see up in the north, this would be next weekend, that possibility of showers in the north and also even that possibility with some of these thunderstorms towards midweek in Utah. But again, we will continue to monitor this and we could see a decrease in fire potential in some areas going through the next seven days. Otherwise, the eight to 14 day outlook taking us into the third week of October still shows warmer and drier conditions. So we'll continue to monitor that moisture and see what long-term effects that may have with this outlook. Otherwise, that concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.